Okay, the first question says that both of the pictures below have the same volume and the same temperature. And so it's a, and we know that the things that influence a gas are pressure, volume, number of particles, and temperature. So I can write a forever statement then for this one. So I can say for every uh, 20 liters of a gas at 273 Kelvin uh, with a pressure that's equal to the outside of 1 atm, there are, let's just make an arbitrary number, 500 particles. Okay, And I can write a new forever statement for my next thing. So I can say for every, now they told us that the volume has stayed constant. So that means 20 liters of a gas at, and they told us the temperature stayed constant, 273 Kelvin, with a pressure of 1 atm. Again, that stayed constant. There are five or er, blank particles, right? And we know that then this is times 1, this is times 1, and this is times 1. And we don't even need to look at these relationships then because it doesn't really matter if they're direct or inverse, they're going to be either multiplied by 1 or times 1, which would mean that the number of particles remains constant. Uh, number two says represent a molecules of hydrogen and oxygen in the containers below. React these molecules to form water molecules leaving no leftover gas. So if I assume that hydrogen is a triangle, I have two triangles and one circle. That's going to make one water. Um, in a like manner, represent particle diagrams for the fact that one volume of hydrogen combines with one volume of chlorine to form hydrogen chloride. Oh, sorry, I skipped this one. What do the HO and the 2 in the chemical formula tell us about the composition of water? Um, it tells us that for every 2 H's, there is 1 O. Okay, and then the last question says... We're going to combine hydrogen and chlorine, so let's make this a triangle and a square. And so we would say, then we would guess that this is HCl. And the last problem said we've got nitrogen and hydrogen, so let's just make these. And then if it's over here, this is going to be there. Okay, so part two is where... We start to get to real data here. It says chemists occasionally found that one volume of gas A reacted with one volume of gas B to produce two volumes of gaseous products. And then we were unable to really figure that out. And Avogadro's big contribution is that, hey, this thing must contain two atoms. So this is the idea of a diatomic particle. Oops. Idea of a diatomic particle. So I've got hydrogen that's over here and chlorine and we get two parts hydrogen chloride so the only way that that happens if this is this and this is this well we can only get one of these but the idea then is that okay one of these must have been bound so that we could get two of these same thing here now we've got hydrogen gas react with one volume two volumes of gaseous water are formed okay so we had this and this and this and we said okay here's my water which we all know is H2O right but now we get two boxes we got two volumes of gaseous water so that must mean that this 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 and that must mean two waters Number seven says, hey, look, two volumes of nitric oxide react with one volume of oxygen gas to form two volumes of a reddish brown gas. Deduce the formula of this gas and such particle representations of the molecules. And of course, the nitric oxide, I'm just going to rewrite this one just below just to make the, the nitrogen, I'm going to make a triangle. So I'm going to do triangle O, triangle O, triangle O, triangle O is in the one box. And then in the other box, I'm going to have 
again. Triangle O, triangle O, triangle O, and triangle O. And then the oxygen is just the four OOs. Okay, so if I were to combine these together, I would expect that each one of these would pick up one of those O's. So I've got triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO, one, two, three, four, five, triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO. Um, and because the particles, you had four of these particles to make up one of those volumes, I could split this in half, basically, to have half the triangles. And there are four particles for each one of those. So if I split those further, I end up with triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO, triangle OO, and the same thing in the other box. Okay, and because we started with this premise of this here, right? And we started with this premise here, and we ended up with these guys here, we could say then that 8NO plus 402 goes to 8 NO2, and that can further be reduced. Well, 8, 4, and 2, these ratios can be reduced further. 8 of these to 4 of these to 8 of these. We didn't really need all of these guys here. I could have just done with two of those, one of those, and I would have gotten. two of those, which means then we can write that as, and represent it as 2NO plus 1NO2 goes to 2NO2.